There was an interesting sprint car uh, Sunday in a 360 show out in Washington, and I've got some details on it for you today. We'll also talk Monday results and share some fun stuff from the Dirt Classic. Let's go. It's Tuesday, September 5th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. We are just a couple of days away from the 53rd World 100. And if you're going to be at Eldora Speedway this week, be sure to visit our friends at the Whistle Stop Bar and Grill. The Whistle Stop is located south of the track, just six miles down 118 in Ansonia. When you leave Eldora and head south, it's a straight shot there. You don't have to make any turns as the Whistle Stop sits on 118, which is Main Street in Ansonia. The Whistle Stop have been huge supporters of dirt racing with partnerships with Sheldon and Jack Hoddenshield, Rico Abraham. Chris Windham, Cap Henry, the Dirt Nerds, Eldora Speedway, and Dirt Tracker. They offer indoor and outdoor dining for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or you can order online at whistlebarandgrill.com and take it back to the track with you. Also, if you're a cigar smoker, they'll have the Mobile Cigar Lounge there uh, all weekend as well, so you can check that out too. Grab some new friends in the campground or grandstands and make the trip right down the road to the Whistle Stop, Ohio's favorite train depot. Well, we'll start today off with the Labor Day racing action from around the country. The day kicked off yesterday with 410 sprint cars at Port Royal. I got asked in the YouTube comments if I thought there would be any all-star guys there to get laps ahead of this weekend's Tusky 50, and I initially thought we probably wouldn't see that many. But I got proved wrong, as there were a few who made the trip, including Chris Windham and Tyler Courtney, plus Cy Lynch, who's basically an all-star full-timer. Some other travelers who were there included Brian Brown, Parker Price Miller, Linton Jeffrey, and Sam Hafer Teep Jr. Brownie sat on the pole, led early before Mike Walter took over with a little bit of a sketchy slider. Uh, late in the going, though, eighth starting Dylan Sisney was on the move, and after a brief battle with Walter, he took over for good, picked up his first Port Royal victory since opening day. Anthony Macri and Brown rounded out the podium. Walter ended up finishing way down the order after tangling with Macri, battling for second. He backed it into the turn three wall pretty hard and was done for the day. Uh, Macri tried to make a move on the outside and then kind of cut down to the bottom to shut the door and the two kind of came together. A quick side note, I love on the live streams when things go quiet on the broadcast under caution and you can kind of pick things up uh, being said or, uh, in the tower around the announcer. If you pay attention, you can maybe catch a tidbit or two uh, here and there. Uh, the $56,000 to win Tusky 50 starts Thursday at Port. At Grace Harbor with the Outlaws after a brief opening lap battle with Brad Sweet, pole sitter Logan Schuhart took over for good on lap two and went the distance for Outlaw win at number six on the season. Rico Abreu, Donnie Schatz completed the night's podium finishers. The infield tires at Grays were hungry last night, and there were several victims through uh, the course of the night, including Sheldon Hoddenshield and Buddy Kofoid, among others. It's a razor-thin margin on that bottom to hit right and avoid those tires, and some guys didn't do it white. Uh, as I put the show together today, uh, points haven't been updated on the Outlaw website, but Sweet did extend again, finishing fourth uh, with Gravel sixth, Macedo eighth. Uh, should be 82 now back to Gravel and 106 to Macedo. Not looking good right now for those other guys uh, for this championship. And I think Gold Cup this week might be show of points only with the differing format. I will try and confirm that. A Gold Cup starts at Silver Dollar on Thursday. USAC Midgets closed out the Firemen's Nationals at, uh, at Angel Park on Monday night with a Logan CV win. He snagged a lead from pole sitter Taylor Reimer just past halfway and drove on to season win at number four. He's now got 11 straight top four finishes in USAC Midget competition. Jade Avedisian and Justin Grant rounded out the top three. With a few weeks off now, CV's championship lead has ballooned to 171 points over JG. Uh, if Logan can hang on to that silver crown title, he could uh, possibly win two of these three USAC National Championships this season. Uh, the big IMCA Super Nationals winner from Monday was Jeff Akey in the late model. It was number eight for him, and he took home three grand and a bunch of other good stuff. Today's schedule at Boone includes a full show for sport compacts, plus more qualifying races for the Northern Sport Mods and Hobby Stocks. Uh, before we get into my main topic today, I wanted to share a couple of quick things from the Dirt Classic at Lincoln. Cliff Adams was our free ticket winner from the uh, promotion we did with the Dirt Classic at Lincoln, and he shared his uh, Sunday view on uh, on Twitter. Uh, nice to uh, see him having a good time. Appreciate him sharing. Also, the promo code buyers got entered into a drawing, and that drawing's winner was Joe, who emailed me this morning. Him and his wife got to check out the trophy and winner's check ahead of time, plus got to grab a photo with race winner Brent Marks afterwards. A really cool deal that Lincoln did for my Dirt Tracker audience. I really appreciate them, uh, uh, these guys sharing their photos with me as well. So we got to see the fun that they had over the weekend. Hopefully get, uh, we'll get to do more stuff like this again in the future. All right, back on Sunday, in between the Outlaws finishing up at Skagit and the Labor Day show at Gray's Harbor, there was a 360 program at Gray's. It also featured IMCA Modifieds, Limited Sprints, and Hornets. The 360 field was 15 cars. The feature was won by Trey Starks. 
would have been something that was easy to pass over if you were kind of perusing Sunday results. What was interesting, though, about that show was Corey Day was in the field as well, but not in the Jason Myers car like we've seen him recently. He was driving an all-white car with the number four on it. Looking at some places online and asking around a bit, the car is owned by Willie Kane, who owns Factory Kane Shocks, and he had quite the group of crew members uh, around hanging around uh, to help him out, including Drew Warner and Carson and Cole Macedo. The chassis was built by Triple X and built here in the United States. That's notable because most of the Triple uh, X production happens overseas in China. The chassis are put together there and then set here for quality control before they're then distributed to teams. And Triple Xs are common in sprint car racing. Guys like Aaron Reitzel, Logan Schuhar, Brady Bacon, among uh, just a few of those who use them every single week. Triple X, though, has their main U.S. facility just north of Seattle in Arlington, Washington. That works out great for Willie because Factory Kane is in Enumclaw, just about 75 miles south of where that Triple X facility is. And just for a bit of uh, history here in context, Willie has campaigned at Sprint Cars before, notably back in 2017 and 2018. James McFadden and Aaron Reitzel drove the car then, and that was a partnership with Sean Dyson. I think they ran Trophy Cup, they ran some Word of Outlaw shows and some other West Coast stuff before they kind of hung it up. Those number 51 Sprint cars had chassis built by CS9, which were special designs from Willie with a big focus on driver safety. Willie told me and uh, Ross Weiss way back on a 2017 episode of Open Red that they had a wider cockpit for the driver and he was trying to make improvements because of guys getting hurt, uh, including Joey Saldana when he was at KKR when Willie was at KKR. What was interesting, though, on that episode of Open Red was Willie also telling us that he used some specialized testing equipment at Triple X back then to test his design. So this connection between he and Triple X had already existed. And in looking at some images of this car that Corey Day drove on Sunday, the design is similar to what Willie had before with those CS9s. It's maybe got some updates and improvements. There's a few uh, changes here and there if you kind of really look close at things. Uh, but unlike the rest of Triple X's cars, this one was supposedly put together at that Washington facility that does have the capacity to fabricate custom pieces. I have no idea if we'll see this car again soon in some races as Willie kind of pops in and out as he wants and as his schedule allows. He's obviously busy building shocks and running FK, but he's a super interesting guy with a long history in sprint car racing and plenty of technical know-how. If you want to listen to that episode of Open Red, I'll link to it below in the video description. It's definitely one of my favorites out of all of the ones that we ever did. I'll also link to a video from Cali Dirt video that has a bunch of footage around the car. Actually, a bunch of the screenshots you've seen here are from that video, but I'll link to that below so you can check it out. I feel like just like the Dave Blaney car we talked about last week after his Sharon win, this deal caught my eye because I like seeing people try and innovate inside that rules box that we have in sprint car racing right now. At first glance, uh, these Willy cars might not look much different, but if you dive in a bit, they're definitely a bit of a departure. Hopefully we'll see it again soon. Uh, that's it for today's show. Uh, a few things on the streaming schedule today, even though it's a Tuesday, so stop by dirttracker.com slash watch tonight to see that. Hope you guys have a good day out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.